I woke up early this morning, just in time to catch the sunrise over the Alps in the quiet company of the village cats. I just love this combination of breathtaking nature and old architecture. This land of beautiful hills, woodlands on one side and vineyards on the other, medieval watchtowers and ancient churches against the backdrop of impressive mountain views. I could look at it for hours. There have been moments in this journey where we doubted we'd ever be able to afford this dream. Yet today we are here, and I feel so deeply grateful for what's ahead of us. We're ready for the next milestone. Now that we have electricity at the house, tonight we'll sleep in our new home for the very first time. One of the things that excites me most of all about living here is to be continuously surprised and amazed by all that nature gives. As I walk through the woods, I'm surrounded by plenty of dead wood for the stove, spring wildflowers dancing in the breeze, and the perfume of rosemary and wild thyme under my feet. In the summer, berries and fruits will adorn the shrubs and trees, offering their sweetness to all the creatures on this land. Even though the generosity of nature is something that I've always been deeply aware of, it's so easy to forget about this abundance when you live in a concrete jungle.
Tonight was our first night at the Kashina. It's still early spring and pretty chilly during the night here, around 4 degrees Celsius or 38, 39-ish degrees Fahrenheit. But we were well prepared, luckily. We brought lots of woolen blankets, as well as an electric blanket that we switched on for an hour or so before bedtime. So the chill was out of bed by the time we got in. We slept really well, and it's so quiet here during the night. It was really nice waking up here for the first time with the sound of the birds. We had our tea with a view first thing this morning when we got up. Nature doesn't only bring me beauty and peace, she also invites me to be creative, resourceful, to make something out of what seems like nothing. She reminds me to trust more, to slow down and embrace the rhythm of the seasons, to listen deeper to both myself and the whispers of the wind.
to the second hand market in Nizza Monferrato, which is about 45 minutes drive from the Cascina. Um, it's the first time we go there because it's only on the third Sunday of every month and it's the first time that we're here on the third Sunday. Um, we'll just have a stroll around and see if there's anything we like. We're not looking for anything in particular, but we love a good flea market, so we are just going to check this one out today. I think we found 10 or so um, olive trees on our property that we didn't know were here. Um, trees is a bit of an overstatement as they're really sad, tiny little plants at the moment. But it will be interesting to see if we can bring them back to life in the future. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there are like several wooden sticks on this terrace and each of them marks an olive tree so there used to be more I think than just 10 but that's what's currently still alive or what we have found at least so let's see if maybe in future one day we'll have a tiny olive grove it's a bit unexpected to find olive trees here because this part of Piemonte, or actually most of Piemonte, isn't really an olive region. It's more a wine and hazelnut region. Um, it's a bit, little bit uh, too much to the north, too far to the north for olive trees. The winters are a bit too harsh here. Um, but this is a south-facing slope. It's kind of arched, so there is not so much wind, so it creates a microclimate that apparently the previous owners of our farm thought would be suitable for olive trees. So, yeah, so it's kind of special. Let's hope it works, because I've been dreaming of olive trees. It's one of the reasons why I want to move to Italy. Um, <laughs> because I'd love having an olive grove. And of course, this isn't so much, um, like we have friends in Tuscany, Umbria, who have like, I don't know, maybe 200 olive trees. Uh, so they can really pr produce a lot of oil, but 10 is enough for personal use <laughs> and then some. Ciao! Abbiamo fatto una piccola passeggiata. <laughs> um, abbiamo trovato 10 un po' più di alberi, di olive. Sì. Abbiamo girato la terrazza. Sì. Sulle... sì sotto la strada. Non sono in uh, un stato. Credo che sono secchi, no? Sì. Perché non sì. li hanno più curati, cioè sì. non, se non c'è più nessuno allora... Sì, spero, siamo... spero siamo... noi possiamo rivivere gli sì. alberi. Sì, sì.
So the electrician already told us that the state of the electricity in the house was a casino, like they say in Italian, a madhouse. And this kind of proves it. Cleaning up the tap filter in the kitchen improved the water pressure by a lot, but in the bathroom we still have nearly no pressure at all. The tap filters on the wash basin have been removed long before we got here, so we'll need to continue searching for the root of the problem, most probably with the help of a plumber. A lot of water pressure gets lost between the main valve and the valve that serves the new farmhouse, and then again between the ground floor and the upstairs. As long as we don't fix this problem, showering indoors is not going to be possible and cleaning is going to be a challenge. Last week you saw us set up our styling dish for the first time in the garden. After we have permanently moved into the house this summer, one of the first jobs I would like to do is install the satellite dish on the roof. I am going to have a look at the accessibility and the setup of the old television antenna. I hope we can use the current pole and simply replace the antenna with the dish. Starlink recommends installing the dish on the north facing side of the roof for the best reception. We maybe could just make it work with the antenna on the south facing side as our roof doesn't have a steep slope and the pole is quite tall. The advantage of installing it here is that we don't need to create a new fixing point and that it's always accessible through the little skylight. It can get quite windy up here, so we will need to secure the dish with some guy wires. So, now we're 